Hi, I am Professor Ajay Hirwe, going to teach you the subject Basic Electrical and Electronics Engineering. First, we will learn the basic concepts of the electrical engineering. First, is the what is the difference between the conventional current and the electric current? We are considering the one conductor, suppose it is of copper, having 29 is the atomic number. So, because of that, the one last orbit having one electron. So, Conductor is the combination of atoms, therefore it is the combination of many electrons revolving or moving in any direction. When we are, we are connecting one voltage source across the conductor, likewise having the voltage source V, then the we all of you know that the electrons having the negative charge, therefore this negative charge electrons attracting towards the positive charge, likewise this is the direction of the electrons so this direction of the electric current we are calling it as actual direction of the current it is the actual direction of the current or we are calling it as electric current it is electric current but during solving the problems we are considering the current direction is from positive terminal to the negative terminal, positive terminal to the negative terminal. Likewise, this direction during solving the problems we are considering. So this direction of the current we are calling it as conventional. It is a conventional flow or a conventional current. Like this. this is the difference between the actual current or an electric current or a conventional current. Resistance. What is the resistance? Resistance is the property of a substance that opposes the flow of electricity or a current through it. The resistance is indicated by R and the unit of a resistance is Ohm. Then the symbolic representation of a resistance is like this. This is the symbolic representation of a resistance. Then the resistance is depends upon first one length of the conductor that means when the length increases resistance increases that means length and the resistance are directly proportional then it also depends upon cross sectional area of a conductor that means it is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area resistance inversely proportional then it depends upon the nature of the conductor and also depends upon the temperature of the conductor so depending upon the temperature coefficient the resistance having two different types first one is PTC PTC means the positive temperature coefficient that means when temperature increases resistance also increases then the second one NTC NTC is nothing but negative temperature coefficient when temperature increases resistance decreases therefore it is negative temperature coefficient now we will see the resistivity. What is resistivity? Suppose I am considering a one cross-sectional area, cross-sectional area A, and the length of a conductor. Length it is a cross-sectional area of a conductor. Then length of a conductor is L. Then measure it is in meter. Then the resistivity. How you are calculating the resistivity from this? Here we know the. Resistance is directly proportional to the length of the conductor. That means resistance is directly proportional to the sorry, it is directly proportional to the length. Then cross sectional area, it is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area. That means the resistance is inversely proportional to the cross sectional area. Then therefore the resistance is directly proportional to L upon A from these two equations. Therefore, R is equal to rho L upon A. Rho we are considering it is constant or resistivity. Rho is called as a resistivity. Therefore, resistivity is equal to R into A upon L. R A upon L. Now we will calculate the or we find out the unit for the resistivity. See here. We are measuring resistance in Ohm. So resistance measured in ohm area area measured in meter square and the length in meter so it is equal to m get cancelled so ohm 
meter. This is the unit of a resistivity. Unit of a resistivity. Thank you. The potential difference. Before learning the potential difference, we will learn the concept. What is electric potential? What is electric potential? We all of you know that the similar charged particles repel each other. Similar charged particles repel each other. Then dissimilar charged particles attracts each other. This means that every charged particle have a tendency to do work. So this ability of a charged particle to do work is called the electric potential. That means electric potential is equal to work done upon charge, having the ability to do work of a charge. Then now the potential difference. What is potential difference? Suppose I am considering the two electric potentials E1 and E2. These are the two electric potentials. Then potential difference is nothing but difference between these two electric potentials. Suppose having distance d. We are not considering the distance. So therefore potential difference is equal to E1 minus E2. If E1 is at higher potential than E2 or E2 minus E1. If E2 is at higher potential than E1. This is the potential difference. Now we will see the current. What is current? Current is represented by I and the unit of current is unit is ampere. Here the unit of the electric potential is volt and also for the potential difference it is volt and the unit for the current is ampere. So current is simply the flow of electrons, the rate of flow of electrons. So I is equal to Q upon T or a rate of flow of electrons or a charge particles per unit time. It is the current. Then now we will see the Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law? Suppose I am considering one conductor. This is one conductor. This is the conductor having resistance R and current flowing through the conductor is I and the potential difference potential difference across the conductor is V. Then V is that means voltage is directly proportional to current I. Therefore it is V is equal to I into R. Here R we are considering it is constant. R is the constant or a resistance. We are calling it as resistance. So V is equal to voltage. V is the voltage measured in volt. I is the current. I is the current measured in ampere. Then R is the resistance. R is the resistance measured in ohm. How we are simply remembering the Ohm's law like this. This is the voltage, current and resistance. See here. Here it is V is equal to IR. That means V is equal to IR simply. V is equal to IR. Then I is equal to V upon R. I is equal to V upon R. And the R is equal to V upon I. This is the simple way to remember the Ohm's law. Now we will see the types of a voltage source. First one is the ideal voltage source and the practical voltage source. So what is ideal voltage source? See here in the circuit, Vs is the source voltage, Vl is the load voltage appearing across load resistance RL. Then the IL is the load current flowing through the load resistance. So ideal voltage source is nothing but what is given to the source, that means source voltage directly equals to load voltage. What is the source voltage? We are appearing directly across load voltage. Not depends upon the current, load current. Current will be anything. But Vs is equal to Vl in the ideal voltage source. See here, Vl is equal to Vs. Not depending upon the load current. This is the characteristics of the ideal voltage source. Then 
practical voltage source practically in the source voltage having internal resistance some internal resistance see rc is the internal resistance of the source voltage rn is the load resistance vn is the load voltage and the in is the current flowing through the load resistance so practically see here we are finding the voltage across the load resistance so it is vn vn is equal to this voltage is equal to this total voltage source voltage minus the voltage drop across the internal resistance so it is equal to vs minus it is voltage across the internal resistance what is the internal resistance oh, sorry voltage across the internal resistance according to ohm's law v is equal to ir so across this resistance we are finding the voltage so it will be current through the internal resistance is il and the internal resistance is rc therefore voltage across it is i into r so i is il and the resistance is rse so voltage across the load is vs minus i l r s e so here this is the ideal and this is the practical so vl is equal to vs minus i l r s e here here the load voltage not depending upon the load current but here in the practically load voltage depends upon the current also and the source voltage so vs is equal to i v sorry vl is equal to vs minus il r s e this is the characteristics for the practical voltage source now we will see the current source current source also having the two types it is ideal current source and the practical current source so firstly ideal current source here it is 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 the source current load resistance rl voltage across the load resistance it is vl and the current through the load resistance it is il in the ideal current source which, which we are giving the source current it appears through the load resistance rl it is il simply here it it will not depends upon the load voltage it will be anything load voltage will be anything so il is equal to is in the practical current source it not depends upon the load voltage then practical current source in the practical current source source current having some shunt resistance so some current will be gone through the shunt resistance will be ise or it is ish because it is shunt current it is ish in the il current through the load resistance so this is the ideal characteristics and this is the practical characteristics so we are finding it is il so il will be total current that is source current minus shunt current so is minus is h it will also not depending upon the load voltage load current is not depending upon the load voltage it depends upon the shunt current now we will see the resistances in series and the resistances in parallel when we are connecting the resistances in series like r1 r2 and r3 and here we are connecting the resistances in parallel r1 r2 and r3 what is the difference between them when we are connecting the resistances in series the current flowing through all the resistances is same but in the parallel combination the current flowing through all three resistances is different through r1 it is i1 through r2 it is i2 through r3 it is i3 and the voltage when we are applying the voltage across the series combination of the resistances the voltage is difference so across r1 it is v1 across r2 it is v2 across r3 it is v3 but in the parallel combination the all the resistances having the voltage v is the same voltage then here the voltage v is equal to the total voltage is v1 plus v2 plus v3 so according to the ohms law v is equal to ir so v1 is nothing but the voltage across r1 so it is i into r1 then the v2 is voltage across r2 so v sorry i into r2 i is the same current flowing through all the resistances so i plus r3 here i is the common we are taking this common i is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 
is v is equal to so v is equal to i into rs rs is nothing but the series combination of the resistances so therefore rs is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 that means when the resistance is in series we are making addition of it simply then when the resistance is in parallel here the total current is i it is distributed in the th three branch i1 i2 and i3 therefore i is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 and according to ohm's law i is equal to v upon r here the v is same across all the resistances so i1 is equal to v upon r1 plus i2 is equal to v upon r2 plus v upon r3 so it is equal to v is common it is 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 therefore i is equal to v upon rp rp is nothing but the parallel combination of the resistances so therefore rp or 1 upon rp is equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 or if we are considering only two resistances in parallel that is r1 parallel with r2 then the parallel combination of r1 and r2 will be r1 into r2 upon r1 plus r2 